This is Cast of Wonders, the young adult fiction podcast featuring stories of the fantastic. Welcome. Episode 594. I'm Catherine Inskip, your editor and host. Our story for today is In This Universe, John Flowers is a Story by Nathan Susnick, a Cast of Wonders original. Nathan Susnick has been many things in his life, a pole vaulter, a Mississippi paddlewheel steamboat deckhand, and a molecular biology researcher, to name a few. He lives in Germany with his lovely wife and kids. You can find his fiction and poetry in markets such as Escape Pod, Strange Horizons, Podcastle, Short Edition, Cast of Wonders, Shoreline of Infinity, and more. His website is www.nathansusnick.wordpress.com. This story is narrated by Dave Robeson. Dave Robeson is an avid literary and sonic alchemist who pursues a wide range of creative explorations. A brainstormer, keeper of the buttery man voice, patent pending, pattern seeker, dream weaver, and eternal optimist, Dave's efforts to boost the awesomeness of the world can be found at the Roundtable podcast, the Vex Mosaic Ezine, and through his own creative studio, Wonder Things Studios. Dave is a creator of Archivos, an online story development and presentation app, as well as the curator of the Palatheus Patreon feed, where he explores a fantasy megacity one street at a time. And now, we've a tale to tell. In this universe, John Flowers is a story by Nathan Susnick. As Lydia takes his hand, John Flowers' heart skips a beat. No, literally, it skips a beat. He has a premature ventricular contraction. It's not dangerous, but this is his first experience with it. His knees go all wonky and he jerks his hand away. Sweat forms on his forehead. He is dizzy. His breaths shorten to gasps and he excuses himself to the bathroom. He is dying, he thinks, having a heart attack at 26 and dying. In a state of panic, he forgets about Lydia, walks out of the restaurant, and flags a cab that takes him to the ER. They take blood, hook him up to beeping machines, and tell him that nothing is wrong. They say that he should see a cardiologist for a thorough examination, just to be sure. The cardiologist informs John that he had an anxiety attack triggered by a premature ventricular contraction. After he has been given a clean bill of health, John does not call Lydia. At this point in his life, he is too embarrassed about his anxiety to explain this to someone else. This is not a meat cute. They never talk again. John Flowers does not get the girl, and he never will. In fact, in the realm of infinite universes, there are none in which John Flowers gets the girl. Even in the universe in which John is an actual flower, no bees seem to want to pollinate them. In this way, John Flowers is a singularity. As Lydia takes his hand, John Flowers' heart stops. Sudden cardiac arrest, not caused by stress, just bad timing. It would also be bad luck, but in this universe, Lydia is an EMT. She performs CPR for the next 17 and a half minutes, while the ambulance struggles through a 15-car pileup on the I-94. When they arrive, Lydia is drenched in sweat and out of breath. The next day, she will wake to sore muscles and an immense sense of pride. This is the longest she has ever performed CPR on anyone. John's heart restarts and he is put into an artificially induced coma. His mother visits him every day. She brings a battery-powered boombox and plays him music that he liked when he was a child. She never cries while in his hospital room. Positive thoughts only. She saves her tears for home. When he recovers, John does not remember the incident or the date or even Lydia. 
His mother tells him the story, and John waits until after cardiac rehab is complete before he calls Lydia to thank her. They laugh the kind of awkward laugh that two people share only after a life-changing experience, and he thinks this is the perfect time to ask her on a second date. I'm sorry, says Lydia, and she explains that while John was unconscious, she met another man. Things have gotten serious over the past four months. Lydia and John never talk again. As Lydia takes his hand, John Flowers' heart rate goes through the roof. The building across the street has exploded. Pieces of rubble shatter the restaurant's windows. Lydia has a deep cut on her left bicep. In a bit of quick thinking, she uses a cloth napkin as a makeshift bandage. From broken conversations and panicked screaming, they learn that the Earth is under attack by aliens. The aliens have already destroyed most of the country's military capacity. Communications are in chaos. That night, John finds his father's old service revolver and joins the resistance. He is disintegrated by a death ray the very next day. It does not go any better for John in the zombie apocalypse universe. John is simply not that kind of hero. In fact, in most universes, he is no better at saving the world than he is at dating. Even in the universe where John Flowers does save the world, he does not get the girl. The Earth is attacked by giant tent caterpillars, playing into his skill as an entomologist. But when he must choose between saving Lydia or the world, he has no clever solutions. He says no catchy phrases. He simply saves the world and Lydia dies. John Flowers never gets the girl. As Lydia takes his hand, John Flowers does not have a heart. Not a physical one, at least. It is made of text pumping imaginary blood through a fictional body. In this universe, John Flowers is a story. His name was built using lists of common names. Both his first and surname were taken from somewhere in the middle, chosen because they sound pleasing when spoken aloud. John Flowers. When a reader scans the text, John feels the words that compose his face. Dark brown skin, strong eyebrows, often raised with mirrored crescent moon scars on their inside edges formed from old lacerations made when he was hit with a stray basketball while holding a pair of binoculars backwards. When he smiles, and he smiles a lot, the corners of his eyes crinkle. They crinkle when he's happy or when he's nervous. They sometimes even crinkle when he's sad. When people like this description, it sends ripples across the multiverse that his other selves feel as slight tickles near the ribs. They smile, even though they do not know why. The John Flowers of this universe knows of the other Johns. He sees their capacity for self-determination, but knows that he is subject to the will of another. Yet... He hopes that the strength of his character will penetrate the text, causing the story to change. The least measurable concentration of independence. He also knows that when the words end, his world ends and he dies. Yet he yearns for deliverance. His hope. He may live on for a while in the thoughts of those who liked his description, those ticklers of his other selves. Perhaps, he thinks, his true fate lies in the place where the text stops. Perhaps it is only then that he can slip the bonds of character and space. He is on the balls of his feet, muscles flexed, waiting for the right moment. A moment in which his jailer drops the key, accidentally leaves an open door, and a portal unfolds through which he can jump. An unfinished 
sentence. As Lydia takes his hand, John flowers. It's very interesting to see a multiverse story centred on a doomed relationship with a protagonist doesn't end up getting the girl. This isn't a story where you get to Groundhog Day your way into your dream girl's heart, or one where an elusive perfect universe is discovered, somehow better than all the rest on the basis of one man's destined love life. This story takes that narrative entitlement to a woman's heart and yeets it into orbit. John Flowers does not get the girl. What this story gives us instead is the richness of individual freedom and a sense that everyone matters not for being the protagonist of their own story, but simply for their individuality. We're not defined by the people who love us or don't, but by our own choices and the freedom to make them. And sometimes things don't work out how we want. Sometimes they never work out in any universe. But that's okay, because it's a big, big universe, and your future is wide open. Join us again soon. We love bringing you the best audio fiction week after week, but we can't do it without your support. Your donations pay our authors, our narrators, our servers and our staff. Please consider supporting us with a monthly donation through either PayPal or Patreon. You can also review us on Apple Podcasts, request us on Spotify and consider the stories we publish for award consideration. There are lots of ways you can help. Join the discussion on the EA Discord and visit us on social media at Cast of Wonders on X and Blue Sky. Come say hello. Cast of Wonders is brought to you by editor Catherine Inskip, assistant editors Cuppy Cobb and Alicia Caparasso, associate editors Rebecca Ahn, Tanya Adelit, Amy Brennan, Somtua Haysway, Becca Miles, Ray O, Samuel Poots, Pooja Prakabaran, Emma Smales, Denise Sudell and Rin Yi. Our editorial assistant is Amy Brennan, our community manager is Denise Sudell and our audio producer is Jeremy Carter. Cast of Wonders is part of the Escape Artist Foundation, a 501c3 non-profit, and this episode is distributed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International Licence. That means you can download or listen to the episode on any device you like, but you can't change it or sell it. Our theme music is Appeal to Heavens by Alexi Nov, available from Promo DJ or his Facebook page. Thank you for listening. <laughs>